When I first met rap in the boombox slapped in the kitchen First record I had, I scribbled that pad, I put it on wax and I lit it From the open mics to the lunch lines to the B-sides When it's crunch time, let the beat ride and I'll brunch rhymes These cold cuts, I bovine Battle rapping in the faded night, praying I would make it, I'ma be alright Those headphones are my only friend, that shady CD is my only spin Couldn't pay the rent, but I spray the pen and I lay it all in my pages day Whoever sees this and subscribes right now, get free imagination You can do anything you want with it What's going on YouTube, it's Noxel And we're back with our reaction series So today today man today's a special day it's always gonna be a special day because you have erb on deck now you guys know i read the comment section the good the bad the ugly the troll this is definitely one of the next highest requested ones it's none other than bob ross versus pablo picasso quick disclaimer on this one before we go any further guys i took a one art history class back in college that i actually aced so therefore that makes me incredibly overqualified uh and well prepared to break this one down but before we get any further, guys, listen, quick shout out to the merchandise. If you like what you see, noxillmusic.com. It's a great way to support the channel directly. I got sign merch on there, shirts, hats, music, everything you can think of. If you guys want to support, again, all links will be down there. Also, shout out to the Patreon and Patreon family. Exclusive reactions and content on there. Again, if you want to support, all links there. But anyways, anyways, you know what we're here for. ERB, step back up to the plate. Let's we'll see what you got. Okay. I am the greatest. Muhammad Ali. I melt faces. MC Dali. Nice A to B, A to B rhyme scheme. And then you see the setup to the characterization. Picasso sitting there smoking his cigarette inside, very European as he's working, as he's getting his art done. And then Rossi Ross with the flow. Flossing for us, baby. Obviously, Muhammad Ali said, I am the greatest. One of his greatest phrases and sayings. Picasso feels very highly of himself. And then I melt faces. Salvador Dali reference. Salvador Dali, another Spanish painter, was very surrealist. You know, the uh, image of the uh, the clock that was melting, faces that were melting, surrealism. Picasso also dabbled in surrealist works and melting faces and melting things with their representations. But also, he's melting the faces off of an MC from a battle perspective. All right, let's keep it rolling. I am the greatest, Muhammad Ali. I melt faces, call me MC Dali. I like that. Is a fluffy mountain of crap. You're the BBS version of Nickelback. But I think you. I wouldn't call my worst enemy Nickelback. Oh my goodness. And I love when he says mountain of crap and he like poops out a smaller version of himself. Obviously, PBS version of Nickelback because, yeah, Nickelback is one of the worst rock bands of the modern age. I mean, wow. I'm just kidding, Nickelback fans. You know I love you, even though you have a terrible taste in music. It's okay. I mean, they, they, they put out hits. They put out the same song over and over again, just recycled as different singles just to make money. Anyways, that's my Nickelback reference for the day. So he's saying, you know, uh, hey, Rossi Ross, you're kind of like Nickelback. Uh, you know, watered down, not a whole lot of talent. Go get that bag on PBS, buddy. Is a fluffy, mountain of crap. fluffy Mountain, of course, because uh, Bob Ross liked to paint a lot of natural landscapes. He had just a shit ton of mountains, basically, he would like to draw. For the PBS version of Nickelback. But I think you must be a genius because with zero planning, the man millions teaching people how to suck at painting. <laughs> Off to the left, you just have a shirtless Lloyd who just painted a beautiful uh, middle finger that he's flicking him off with. I think you must be a genius because with zero planning. But I think you must be a genius. I, I just love the uh, accent. I'm not really sure if it's a Spanish accent per se. Maybe a little bit of a Italian leaking into there. But I just love the way that he goes higher pitch with a cadence. It's so conversational and yet vicious at the same time. Hey, millions teach your people how to suck at painting. Why don't you go back home and beat your brush, you chum? I could make better art with my wiener. Oh. I'm so... Beat your brush, you chump. I mean, it's not ERB if we don't have a dick joke coming through. So he's beating his own brush. Also... What did Bob Ross say when he would clean his brush? I mean, that man just giggled like a school child when he was cleaning his brushes. He's like, I'm going to beat the demons out of it. Yeah, it was something like that. So playing off the beating your brush and then also relating that even further to the wiener bars. And then Picasso talks about his wiener dog, who I think was actually named Lump. Yeah, that's a pretty self-explanatory 
bar. Didn't he draw some pictures of his dog as well? So there you go. Goes even further. Be so brash, child. I could make better art with my wiener. Oh. I'm so glad you could join me today. So I could teach you how to feel some joy when you paint. You remove. Feel some joy when you paint. So glad you could join me today. A lot of Ross's sayings, his personality, you know, he's very low key. He's very mellow in how he teaches us when he would teach you how to paint on PBS. I'm so glad you could join me today. Very great characterizations of both of them. I like how Lloyd is playing Picasso and I love how Pete's coming in with the Bob Ross. I could teach you how to feel some joy when you paint. You're a moody little genius. Always so serious. I know you must be on your blue period. Your work is melancholy. Yeah, Picasso was the epitome of, you know, the sad, traumatized things going on up here, but could produce genius works. I mean, that was Picasso. He was very melancholy. And then the blue period, when he just painted with a lot of blues, a lot of monochrome colors, that described it. But also, Pete coming through with the bars, relating it to him having his period. You know, maybe that's why you're just so emotional and sad all the time. Ooh, Peter, babe. Always so serious. I know. You must be on your blue period. And he even points to the blue on the ballot. I like that. Little genius. Always and isn't so that in the background? Isn't that how a show used to start? Yeah. <laughs> Joy to paint. Again, so many references. I love this. References on references. Now, you must be on your blue period. Your work is melancholy. I'm painting happy little trees. Call me Jackson Pollock. Because I splatter MC with the voices. Because I splatter MCs, Jackson Pollock, another painter, and yeah, he just would chuck paint at a canvas and yeah, he made art out of that. I'm painting happy little trees, call me Jackson Pollock. Because I'm painting happy little trees. Yeah, we're just gonna work in some happy little clouds over here and some happy little trees. There's no limits to what you can achieve. He, he, he really loved to paint his trees, man. I mean, he painted bazillions of trees, and yes, that's an actual number. Don't fact check me, bitch. Period. Your work is melancholy. I'm painting happy little trees. Call me Jackson Pollock because I splatter MC with the voice of Sue's. So let's do this. I twist you up like you're a Rubik's Cubist. Don't you sell world. <laughs> I twist you up like you're a Rubik's Cubist. Cubism. Picasso was a part and one of the founders of the Cubism movement and, you know, having these geometric sort of shapes and cubes within his art and the way that he painted stuff but also relating to a Rubik's Cube, twisting up a Rubik's Cube to try to match all the colors. So we got some nice bars and metaphors flying around here. Ooh, so let's do this. I twist it up like you're a Rubik's Cube. Don't you say a word like you know what it is. You painted 30,000 pictures of bushes and sticks. Those are odious. <laughs> of bushes. It's not bushes. It's bushes because he's still in character. And again, the scenery is dope too because obviously you've got Bob Ross behind natural flowing scenery. Kind of matches his soothing personality, his voice like a flowing river. Ever. And then you've got just the uh, obtuseness of Picasso as he sat there smoking a cigarette. Like you're a Rubik's Cubist. Don't use that word like you know what it is. You painted 30,000 pictures of bushes and <laughs> Don't use that word like you know what it is. You don't know what cubism is. All you did was sit there and just draw fucking trees, man. You're not a visionary like me. Don't use that word like you know what it is. You painted 30,000 pictures of bushes and sticks. Don't you only snow that you stole your whole show? You just ripped off your teacher and added an Oh, yeah. PBS had a show before him. What was the name? It was a German dude. Oh, I can't remember his name. Somebody's going to have to comment below. This one's going to bother me. But yeah, basically, he taught Bob Ross. And then Bob Ross just took the whole style. And what Bob Ross did, you know, in 30 minutes, he teach you how to paint. And the thing was, he made some dope paintings. But he had this technique of uh, where you would wet the whole canvas, right? And it just allowed you to get a different depth and dimensions to the colorings. And you could do things a lot quicker. Obviously, setting up well for a TV show. But the dude who taught him, taught him this wet canvas technique. So, Rossi took that. Uh, what was the fro story? Why did Bob Ross rock a fro? I, I do know that after he got the fro, that became like synonymous with his look. And uh, he wanted to shave it off at one point. was like, hell no, that is your look, man. You're, you're keeping that. Gotta do it for the bag. Get the bag, Bobby. Change lives. What do you know that you stole your whole show? You just ripped off your teacher and added an afro. My name is Pablo Diego, Jose Francisco de Paula, Nepomuceno Maria, Pero Sorimiro Cipriano, Pero Santissima Trinidad, Ruiz y Picasso. Back to Joe. Bob. Well, Bob is Bob. <laughs> oh, what a fancy name. I mean, there was a lot of words. I don't know. Is that his full name? Remedio Cipriano de la Santissima Trinidad? I don't, I don't know. I don't know Picasso's full name, but he's got one of those extravagant 
aristocratic names and you got about 20 different ways of saying it. Back to Joe. Bob. And then Bob, because your name is simply Bob. I have this rich, luxurious sounding name and uh, you, my friend, are just Bob. He's my friend, Ruiz y Picasso. Back to Joe. Bob. Well, Bob is dropping bombs like this is Guernica. Served 20 years. Air Force. United States of America. My of America. We do it all for America around here. I love the way he says that. And Guernica dropping bombs. Oh my God, that one hurts. One of Picasso's famous paintings. I learned about this in Spanish and art history. Guernica, right? Little town, the País Vasco, okay? During the Spanish Civil War, Nazis came uh, under the pretext that uh, they were organizing a rebellious movement there and they bombed the shit out of it. They just carpet bombed the shit and killed a ton of civilians, decimated the city, and uh, Picasso painted Guernica in response to that and pictured that tragedy and that Nazi bombing of it all. And yeah, it was just horrible human atrocity. So he get it, he's dropping bombs on this track and then literally like the Nazis dropping bombs on the town of Guernica during the Spanish Civil War. Dropping bombs like this is Guernica. Served 20 years. Air Force. United States of America. Yeah, he did serve in the Air Force, yeah. Bob Ross, soft-spoken man, was a military badass. My technique will make your mistress weep. Put her to sleep. Elbow drop a drink. I go deep and I... Make your mistress weep. Wasn't it the weeping mistress? Was one of his works. And then elbow... What, what's the elbow? Hang on. My technique will make your mistress weep. Put her to sleep. Elbow drop a drink. I go deep and... Elbow drop her dreams? I mean, Picasso liked to paint uh, his mistress. And one of it was her crying, the weeping mistress. And then what was... There was another one with like the elbows and it was like an erotic one. Like she's showing some boobage and then like didn't her elbow get ripped or something because like whoever bought it like tripped and fell and ripped the canvas or, or something happened with the story with the elbow and all that. But you get it. We're referencing some of Picasso's paintings and we're using it as bars to flip it on him saying, hey, I'm gonna get with your girl, bitch. How you feel about that? My tech. No condom, but going in raw. You gonna make you miss. Wow. <laughs> Tone it down a little bit, Knox. This is PG. Sweet. Put her to sleep. Elbow drop a drink. I go deep. And I keep it mellow like some cadmium yellow. I'm a bright like titanium white kind of fella. Don't believe it? Cadmium yellow. Bright like titanium white. Obviously, Ross is like taking us through a tutorial of painting. Talks about his colors and how he loves his colors. And he loved all of his fluffy clouds and titanium white. It's wonderful. The mellow like some cadmium yellow. I'm a bright like titanium white kind of fella. Don't believe in mistakes. Let's just step to me. Yo, Pablo. You just got your happy little ass beat. Who won? Who Don't believe in mistakes. You know, and that's what he would encourage in his viewers. You know, there are no mistakes. Right? Happy little coincidences. There's no mistakes. Unless you want to battle me. And then you get your ass beat. But we had a little bit of the uh, playing off of the, you know, stroking your brush masturbation bar. So I can only think there might be some homoerotic bars just chucked in there for good measure as well. Because was did Pablo like to get his ass beat? Maybe. Who knows? This beat was beating cheeks, though. That's for sure. All right, let's keep rolling. You I like the mix of this as some of like the rockier elements and then some of these impact strings just hit. So you blend like the orchestral with the rock. Yeah, it really worked well. This was a dope beat. I think they both did a really good job on this one. Subscribe with a giant paintbrush. But there only can be one winner to rule them all. So who is going to win this one today? I don't know. I thought Picasso had some good bars. But my favorite bar was probably the dropping bombs like Guernica bar. Just because it just made me feel like I was smart for once because I got that bar. So based off of that and just pure selfish reasons, I am going to give it to Bob Ross. ERB, you are Knoxville Hill certified. So if you guys like today's video, as always, be sure to smash the like button. Listen, if you're here at the end, obviously enjoy the content. Do me a favor, support the channel directly. Subscribe, notifications on. As always, just a reminder, stay safe, stay positive. It's Knoxville. Catch you again. I'm out.